Hello and welcome to uh, section 4 of chapter 35, the American World War II of the American Pageant for U.S. History, any of the U.S. History courses in high school or college. Uh, today we're looking at Roe De De Roosevelt defeats Dewey through the Holocaust. I know this is a really long chapter, usually we don't have four, we're actually going to have five videos for a chapter, but World War II is really big and there's a lot of material to cover. So let's get into it. Uh, the war is going well. We left off at D-Day. Uh, the Allies had invaded France with... Um, uh, the British, the French, and the Canadians, they established their beachhead, they did a swinging action, and they were pushing towards uh, Paris. Uh, and so it worked uh, really, really well. And so the election's coming up. The, the election of 1944, uh, the Republicans, wanting to oust Roosevelt after three terms, who's now running for a fourth term, nominate Thomas E. Dewey uh, and John W. Brecker for their vice president. We almost had a President Dewey. Uh, the Democrats, um, they nominated Roosevelt for the presidency, and the war is going well. You don't want to change leaders in the middle of a war. And then Senator Harry S. Truman from Missouri is the vice president over the incumbent vice president, Henry A. Wallace, which is a curious choice. I mean, why would they kick out the sitting vice president? Uh, the reason why is FDR's health was failing. Uh, he was not doing well in terms of his own stamina and health. And so people saw that and realized that there's a strong possibility that whoever is vice president could end up president because of, of uh, his failing health. Wallace was also very unpopular with the Democrats. He was a little too liberal for Democrats, and he's a little eccentric. Uh, not a lot of people wanted Truman. Though. Only 2% of people in a poll wanted Harry Truman uh, for the vice presidential candidate, but uh, they went with it and kind of in a stunning, kind of you know, swept some delegates at the convention and put Harry Truman in uh, as the VP candidate. Roosevelt won a sweeping majority of the popular vote, the Electoral College, the war was going well, D-Day was going well, the Pacific War was going well. Uh, here's the war map from 1944. You know, the, the West kind of went with Dewey. They were very strong Republican uh, strongholds. Uh, the rest of the country went for Roosevelt. 53.5 uh, to 46% is a pretty big majority. Uh, so back to the war. Um, after taking Paris... Uh, on August 25th, 1944, uh, um, they then pushed into near Nazi territory. We're talking late uh, uh, summer into fall 1944. There was actually a chance for, for Patton. He could have encircled a lot of the Nazi armies, and uh, he was told not to. It was too risky. He couldn't expose his flank. Uh, and so the Nazis fell behind the famed Maginot Line and set up this very uh, strong defensive network. Uh, you have Operation Market Garden, which is a disaster. Well, not a disaster, but it really didn't go off well. It was planned by Montgomery to liberate the Netherlands, and things get bogged down here. Um, the battle for the Hurton Gore, uh, Forest, and then through Luxembourg, and into France, and then to Germany. Uh, really slowed by the Maginot Line and the thick forest. And so they thought they had hopes that the war could end by 44. It's now going to drag into 45. So kind of a just general scope of things in terms of the war in Europe, the European theater. Remember the first battles, the Americans landed November 8th, 1942 at Casablanca and Algeria and Tunisia. Um, and then you have the British pushing uh, here from El Alamein, pushing the Nazis west. Uh, they kicked them out in 1943 and then leapfrogged from Sicily to Italy and moved up that way. Uh, you have D-Day the whole time and then you have the sweeping action. We'll get to the Battle of Bulge. There's a second invasion of France in August 1944, and the whole time the real war is going on here, um, you know, the, the substantial war, I should say, where most of the fighting, most of the casualties and death is occurring. The Soviets are slowly pushing the Nazis back towards Germany. So a victory in Europe. Uh, Germany was fighting for survival on two fronts at this point. Um, there's one last gasp. Uh, on December 16th, 1944, the Nazis, the Germans, launched a massive counteroffensive to break through the Allied lines. Their hope was to break through, push them back, uh, and hopefully kind of re reconnoiter, reconvene, uh, and try to win the war. Uh, this is called the Battle of the Bulge because there was a giant bulge in the, the Allied lines in Belgium. Uh, it's the largest U.S. land battle in history. 600,000 men uh, fought. There was 90,000 casualties in this battle. Uh, the 101st Airborne was famously completely surrounded at the city of Bastogne in Belgium uh, until they were rescued, rescued through a blizzard in a snowstorm by Patton's 3rd Army. Uh, the weather was terrible. There was a freak snowstorm, a blizzard, which kept the American planes from, from flying. But once the skies cleared, uh, the fighter pilots came in and kind of cleared the Nazis out. And the Battle of the Bulge uh, is really the last real gas of the Nazis, real 
uh, offensive that they have in the West. This kind of shows you an illustration of what's going on. Uh, the previous line is this blue one here, and then the Germans attack uh, and push this giant bulge here. Uh, and Bastogne was completely surrounded. There's reinforcements that come in and stop this uh, offensive that the Nazis la launched. Uh, this is from the National World War II Museum in New Orleans. Uh, you, as you can see, Bastogne was completely surrounded until it was saved by George S. Patton and the Third Army racing to save the, the, the 101st Airborne. Uh, from there, they then push the Nazis back. They renew the offensive. They have reinforcements, and they push them back into Germany. Uh, and so by February, the line had actually advanced, and they're now fighting into Germany uh, and trying to race to Berlin between the Soviets, the British, and the Americans, and what's left of the French, the Free French, as you would call them. So it's a race to Berlin. As I mentioned, the Soviets retook Poland. They now invaded Germany. They destroy everything in their wake. They destroy Warsaw. I mean, it's vicious fighting. In Germany, they're destroying everything they can. Um, the, the Soviets win the race to Berlin. They surround the capital by April 1945. Hitler, knowing everything was lost, was losing his mind, commanding regiments and, and divisions that were no longer there. Uh, actually got married on April 29th to his longtime mistress, Ava Braun. Uh, and then the next day, the two killed themselves by swallowing cyanide pills, shooting themselves, and then having their bodies burned. Uh, Germany didn't sign the unconditional surrender until May 7th. And so there's some weird instances where some of the hardcore, very fanatic Nazis, the SS, kept fighting. And some German troops actually turned on them uh, and began fighting with the Allies to get rid of the Nazis. Um, so VE Day, Victory Over Europe Day, was celebrated on May 8th, which happened to be President Truman's birthday. Um, because sadly, Franklin Roosevelt died of a brain hemorrhage on uh, April 12th, 1945 in Warm Springs, Georgia. His last words were, I have a terrific headache, and unfortunately he expired. And so Vice President Truman was the one who celebrated the, uh, the death of Hitler and the end of the European War. This was the Time Magazine cover to celebrate the end of the war. And so here's the race to Berlin. Uh, and, and really, this goes on. There's a funny instance when they when they cross the Rhine River, Patton famously uh, urinated in the river to show his disgust and disdain for the, for the Germans. Uh, and there's photographs of it. It's, you don't see anything, but you can look it up on YouTube or Google. Uh, and then you have the Soviets pushing this way. You have the French and all that going on. Um, that's a video for a PBS video for, for Roosevelt, one minute little thing. Kind of kind of what's going on here, uh, everything we've been talking about. These are the American and Soviet troops who first met at the Elbe, Elbe River, Elbe River, excuse me, on April 25th, 1945. Big cause of celebration because that means there's no Germans, no Nazis in between them. Uh, that was kind of scary. I'm sorry. That was deep of me. By the Soviets stealing the wars, we had meetings. Or the Jew exposed the Jewish people. Let's call it the Shoah. This is hopefully like a lot of.